All right, so today we are going to be welding this little differential here out of an E36, and this is kind of going to be a part two to the original video we made of welding a diff because I see constantly in the comments that there are just questions, questions and questions, and things where people are saying, oh, you're ruining that diff, and yada yada. So we're going to take every single step and break it down for you. about that little guy. So that you know exactly how we're welding this diff, what we're doing to mitigate the splatter, as well as these little plates that I weld in on these diffs. We're gonna do why we weld the plates in, and we're also going to show you what we do when there's a C-clip axle, because that is the number one comment. All of you guys, well, not all of you guys, some of you guys are saying, well, if you weld plates in, how do you get the C-clips in the axles? Well, if you look very closely at this diff, you see this here side? This one doesn't have side, it doesn't have the clips. But now if we take and we rotate this over, there's another open side. So the very simple answer is if you've got a C-clip axle, you only weld a plate on one side. And then when you flip it over, the other side is still open and you can get your C-clips out. So that answers that question. This is not a C-clip axle, however, so we are going to weld plates on both sides. Now, another thing you have to be cautious of with axles like this, and this is for any car that has an independent rear suspension, these stub shafts in the side over here, they have to be in when you weld this diff because if they are not in when you weld the diff, your spider gears are not gonna be in the right place and you're gonna have a very hard time, if at all, being able to get your stub shafts back in again. They'll not wanna go in, they won't line up and everything will be all screwed up. So make sure you got your stub shafts in. <laughs> make sure that you have your axle shafts in or some sort of axle stub in there if you're doing a, a straight axle, just so that your gears are lined up so when you go to put your axles back in, everything fits like it's supposed to. Okay, so one of the things you wanna make sure of when you before you start welding this is that you want these gears to be as parallel as possible. Because again, when you're welding, fit up is the most important thing. So if you've got these things set like this and you have this giant gap here and no gap here, and actually, let me grab a screwdriver so I can point better. You can see that there's a giant gap right there and there's no gap right there. So we're gonna have a hard time welding that side and we're gonna have an even harder time welding that side. So what you wanna do is just take this and rotate it until you get to a position where these two teeth are pointed straight up and then this way you have literal gear contact where you can weld all these things together. Okay, so as you guys can see, that plate is in there. Now the one thing that I always do is I cut the plate a little bit long and I set it down on top of the two outer spider gears. And the reason being is because you still need room for your axle shafts. So if your axles break, you can still pop that axle out of there without it hitting the plate. So you wanna set that plate up off of the axle stubs a little bit before you weld it in. So now we're gonna just tack that puppy in there and then we're gonna put some heat to this thing and get everything heated up so we can weld it out. So for those of you worrying about the spatter that's going to get all over this when we start welding this thing, what we're going to use is this neat little stuff called nozzle gel or nozzle dip or whatever. And no, it's not to dip your nozzle, it's to dip the welding nozzle in so that the slag doesn't stick to it. Now what we do is we take a little brush and I'm going to use my finger for this purpose, but we'll literally just lay it into the gear set and this nozzle dip will keep any spatter from sticking directly to the gear. Well, hey, the next thing is to make sure that this is nice and toasty. So you want to warm this up because these gears are thick. That's only a 200 amp welder. We want as much 
Weld penetration is absolutely possible with these things. We want to burn this plate in here super nice and we want to get enough weld in there so that this is not going to break. Just some nice even heating. I'm try to get it up to about 165 to 200 degrees. So now let me turn my hat back around because I'm not 17. Um, one of the other tricks that I like to use too is whenever you weld thick metal or potentially cast metal or anything like that, you don't ever want to cool it down rapidly. Like we don't want to spray this with brake clean right now to cool this thing off and whatever. We want it to cool naturally because if we don't let it cool naturally, the fact that we welded mild steel to hardened steel could potentially cause cracking and it could cause pieces of the weld to break off. And that's never good because then it gets into your ring and pinion, you blow the ring and pinion. So what I like to do is I take these little guys here, which are just, they're basically Kevlar um, finger liners for when you're TIG welding so that you don't burn yourself. And these will retain heat. So I like to take these and just stick them right over top of the diff like this. And it'll make it cool off a little bit slower so that if you get a, a weird breeze or whatever, it's not going to rapid cool this thing. So now we're just going to let it cool. Once it's cooled off, we'll hit it with some brake clean. We'll make sure that we don't have any, you know, boogers on the ring and pinion. And then once that's done, we'll put it back together, fill it with fluid, put it in the car. All right, so I hope that clears up a lot of the questions that you guys had about welding the diff. And now that this thing is all cooled off, I like to clean it out with some, this here brake parts cleaner, and then go through it with maybe just a magnet, just to make sure you get all the little metal, metal, medical particles, huh. no, medicals. Huh. Make sure you get all the particles out of it so that there's no metal left in the diff. And, you know, you can look for little shinies and pieces and whatnot and try to get everything that you can. But I always recommend to the customer that, you know, you change the diff fluid after the first run or so. Run it up, get it broken in, change the diff fluid just to make sure you get out everything that you had in there. And then, uh, yeah, so the whole plating thing, if you got C-clip axles, just plate one side. Don't plate both sides because then you're not getting the axles back in. If you do get them in, they're going to fall right back out because you can't put C-clips in. So a lot of misconceptions there. Um, heating it up helps a lot. So make sure that you heat up the diff before you weld it, especially if you have a super low-powered welder. We have a 200-amp welder, so everything is good. But without a 200-amp, if you got like a 100-amp welder, you're going to need to heat the crap out of it to get it to go.
So, hope you guys enjoyed that one. We're going to put the stiff back together. He's going to get it back in his car, and everything will be good to go.